Hey people, Fernando doing another video for the channel, in this case gonna be reviewing the Drake Cutter, this new starter ship that you see right now on screen. It's a beautiful ship and it's similarly priced to the Aurora. It's now being offered at about 45 bucks, give or take. There's gonna be some variation depending on specifically where you are. 45 bucks as a starter ship in a starter package. This means package means that it includes the game itself. You wanna start playing the game with a ship and a game package. You can buy a ship that does not actually include the game, so always keep that in mind. As of right now, you can still play the game, and it's gonna be for a free fly week, so for now, you can just use the referral below, always do that no matter what you do, use the referral in the description below, play for free, and if you then decide to buy the game, you will get 5,000 credits of in-game money thanks to the referral. But you're probably here because you want to know, is this worth buying? How good or bad is the cutter as a starter ship? And I'll tell you, I'll give you a final answer to that. First of all, I can tell you right now, it's a beautiful ship. It just looks fantastic. It's one of these gold standard ships with all of the bells and whistles, and that's very much appealing. It's it, Aesthetically speaking, it has that Drake look very functional, very uh, practical, uh, with tubes and hoses going all over the way. It looks a little bit like these Star Wars kind of ships, which you know many of us very much like. Um, I, I will tell you though that the direct you know competition to this would be the Aurora, similar price range and you know similar starter ship. But one of the things I don't like all that much is just two guns. The Aurora has the option of having four guns, starts with two, but has two empty hard points for you to upgrade to. So that's already something that I don't like that much. I also noticed that it doesn't fly all that well in atmosphere. In space, it does okay. In atmosphere, man, yeah, it flies like a freaking toaster, which, you know, it's not terrible, but you definitely can tell that a, a ship like a, an Aurora, a Pisces, those would be a bit more agile in atmosphere than the cutter. But let's take a, you know, a moment, land over there, and continue with the review. I'll promise that you'll have a much clearer picture of knowing if this ship is right for you or not. So from the exterior we can tell that the ship is very attractive. This is the gold standard uh, being applied to the Drake cutter. Means all of those little details are to the max. We have VTOL engines, which is nice. These actually work, and they work properly. You have a lot of boost. If you want to take off in a hurry, you'll be able to do so pretty fast, vertically so. So that's always appreciated. We can tell that we have, of course, a little ramp there in the back for our garage. You see that little window, which is not always immediately obvious, but it's a nice little detail of quality that you have here. The Drake Cutter is the most detailed, finely tuned starter ship, no doubt whatsoever. Now, from the inside, we can see that we have great visibility. Our dashboard is pretty much taking like one, uh, less than a third, more like a, a, a quarter of our uh, of our view. So, lots of visibility all around. You can even look around to the side. The panel has buttons that are all interactable. You can just click on a number of little switches here. This one, for example, moves armor to the side. I don't know if it changes anything or not, but there it is. So buttons, yeah, and the displays are always, um, you know, placed in a functional manner. This is how I would have it myself. You have your radar, your enemy, you have your shields, and your power. I'm pretty happy with that layout. Let's get out of this chair and take a look around the rest of the ship. So. We're in our cockpit, and to the left we see that we have just some you know, racks and such. Now to the right we have something that I do like quite a bit. We have a comprehensive gun rack with a rack for a large weapon, a rocket launcher or a railgun, a long gun um, rack, and a place for two handguns. So this is very nice, and it is functional. You can get your guns before going out on a bunker mission or whatnot. So that is cool. You do have a bed here, which you do want. You wanna have a bed so as to log out. You lie down, 
you log out and when you log back in to play again, you start from the same point wherever it is that you went to bed. You always need a bed in your starter ship. That's the biggest drawback that ships like the Mustang have. People don't know about these things. They buy a Mustang because they want to have a fighter or whatnot, but the Mustang has no bed and it has no interior space. The cutter does have interior room. It is only 650 as you see here. Right, you see that it's 650k, which is really not a whole lot, but it allows you to move a few things. Now, for example, I'm in the station, and if I, you know, play some some items here, I do have, you know, some room for a few things. Not all that much, you know. I can drop a few, a few helmets, some cool stuff. Yeah, but it's soon filling up. Uh, ideally, you would want to have something that has more capacity. The Titan definitely does. The Pisces has almost 2k. A worth of internal storage um, but yeah the more you have the better it is because the more stuff you can carry around um, but anyway this is the same kind of storage that you have in the Aurora so it's you know pretty much the same there we have a bathroom with what I see only as wasted space like this little corridor here uh, and the bathroom itself even though it's a nice thing to have there's no use for it right now in game I mean it's not even being talked about so it's easily gonna be another five or ten years no joke before you actually need a bathroom in your ship and this room here I wish they had used it for more storage or maybe a food processor and just access the bathroom with a door on the side like they do in our ships this is just shelves and here we have a little locker for storage now when we get to the back the party trick here is our little garage you can open this ramp so as to access here and drop boxes or some of the one SCU containers for going down bunkers a number of things and yes as you see it does fit a little Stevie the STV vehicle which is nice you know you have your ramp here so you can open this up and you can get a Stevie or one of the PTV Grey Cats, one of the little golf cart vehicles which are also you know little cars that you know drive around there's not a whole lot of use for land vehicles as of right now but if you want to play around with it you can do that you also have uh, room for four SCU of storage which definitely not enough for anything important but it lets you at least try some of that storage you know, hauling game loop if you want to give it a go eventually maybe with more profitable illegal uh, uh, merchandise and, and hauling that kind of stuff it could be more interesting as of right now for SCU really not worth doing much with that but you can and that's kind of the idea with a starter ship Let's now try flying it around, do a little bit of combat, see how it does. And I want to do some of these monitor missions and check these, uh, comparing the Cutter and the, um, um, the Aurora, checking both those out and see how long it takes to gun down a monitor. And I'll do both of those at 500 meters so as to have a fair comparison.
So, after spending several hours with the Drake Cutter, it has grown on me. I was expecting a lot less performance in combat given the difference in guns compared to the Aurora, but as you saw, in spite of what you see in paper, on the practical side, they both perform pretty similar. That's probably because of the capacitor being the same in both ships. I do see that the Hull HP in the Aurora is 6K and the Cutter has three times as much Hull HP. So that's compensating for the difference in shields too. Two shields, two size one shields for the Aurora, only one size one for the Cutter, but a lot more Hull HP. That is though likely to change, so don't consider that written stone. Now, all of that taking into account, I think it's coming down to what you like the most, and this is definitely the cutest ship that you have in the starting ship range. It looks great, it's like this flying box that's super um, square and not very aerodynamic. It actually flies terrible in atmosphere. In space, it's a little bit more forgiven. Um, I think that as of right I see right now, given how well it performs in, in spite of having just two guns, it, when it comes down to it, what is it that you're going to be enjoying the most? I do see also that you have a different uh, inventory for this locker here compared to the rest of the ship. So here you have uh, external inventory, which is actually the, the storage locker that you just saw me open. This is 650k, which is separate from the inventory of the ship, which is another 650k. This means it has doubled the inventory capacity of the Aurora. So that is yet one more thing that I learned today that gives more points to the cutter. Here you have those four SCU, which as I said before, it's really not all that much, so it has to do any real hauling, but it gives you a little bit of a dipping your toes in the waters of what it feels like to drag around space a few boxes and play space trucker. Maybe with a little bit more options in terms of the illegal cargo, it would be financially more viable. But I think that at the end of the day, you're looking at what is it that you're going to be enjoying the most? What is it that's going to be giving you the most pleasure flying around as a starter ship? This is definitely the most, the best looking starter ship that's in game right now. For 45 bucks, give or take, you have a gold standard um, starter ship that will do a little bit of everything, as uh, you can see. It's not great for combat, it's not the fastest or the most agile. If that is something very important for you, probably consider going with the Aurora. Now, given the difference in performance on the practical side of things, it is close enough for me to take into account a lot more what is it that gives me more pleasure? What is it that I find more appealing to the eye? What is it that I enjoy in, in climbing in and out? And I can tell you, I like climbing and flying in into the cutter a lot more than the Aurora, even though the Aurora is better on paper. Okay, guys, so that's basically it. Yes, if you're considering playing Star Citizen, this is a great option for you. Right, you have the links there below. Do use a referral, especially if you watch this video at some other time. There's always something that you can get from using it, so don't forget about that either. See you on the next video. Take care.